Good evening, folks. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Just want to go over a few things. Let's recap, especially the Tasha Diaz contrast scandal. I got some more information for you, folks. Let's talk about it. All right. Mm. Let's get it popping. Mm. Good evening, folks. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Sunday night. Let's take a look at what's been going on here. Particularly with the majority leader, Tasha Diaz. And her attempt to award a contract to family and friends. The old family and friends network. Try that go. Listen. I want to say thank you to uh, some individuals who have sent me some information. I appreciate it. Uh, don't know who you are, and that's the way I like it. Stay anonymous. Just send me the information, politicwithfred at gmail.com. So thank you very much. And to some uh, you know, gentlemen I was talking to earlier, um, uh, very informative, very knowledgeable uh, on you know, some important things that uh, you know, we should all have some familiarity with, um, especially if we want to you know, maintain transparency and accountability among our elected officials and within our government in general. Uh, but good evening, folks. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Uh, I wanted to talk about Tasha Diaz. Um, you know, it, I'm going to show the meeting uh, it, that happened, uh, what was it, Tuesday, I believe. It was the Education Committee meeting. She chairs that meeting. Yeah, I mean, that committee. Yes, yes, she does. She's the chair. Uh, and after the interim superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez, spoke uh, about the state of the uh, public schools here in the city of Yonkers, uh, two gentlemen uh, came forward and sat in front of the committee to solicit bulletproof windows. Bulletproof windows. Yes. And apparently, I didn't know. Maybe you folks did. Maybe you didn't. But our schools are in need of bulletproof windows. You know, I mean, I want our kids to be safe, no doubt. All our kids, I want them to be as safe as possible when going to a school. But bulletproof windows, is that a real threat? Are our kids in danger of a sniper? You know, I mean, you know, there have been shootings, yes. But it usually involves someone entering the building, right? So, you know, we have to make sure that our schools are secure at the entrances and the exits, um, more so. But uh, if there is a threat, maybe I don't know about it. I think we should be you know, told this, right? It, well, Tasha Diaz, um, again, she's the chair of the Education Committee. I'm going to play this. Where did I have it here? All right, let's take a look at this um, meeting here that happened. Gift that you gave us the calendar. Oh. My kids have been out of Yonkers <laughs> Public Schools for years now, so I haven't gotten a calendar, so I'm very excited. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank, thank you. you very much. So they with organized, that being said, that we want to say thank you oh. and let us know what you... And then you come... Oh, the gentleman in the blue, I don't know who he is, but the gentleman to the left there, I recognize him right away. I, I've seen this guy around for many years, um, you know, from being in a motorcycle club. He was uh, in a club called Blockbusters, I believe was the name, um, to seeing him around uh, events, political events. You know, I've seen him, I believe, at Zupta's, Castle Royale. Um, I knew he was also some um, part owner in the Whiskey House that was located on Central Avenue there. That's now a Latin lounge uh, um, or restaurant there. But uh, he was a owner of Whiskey Club. He then went to do some kind of security or something from, you know, what I would hear at just seeing him and, and being around the uh, different events that were going on, you know, fundraisers and things. So I knew he was, you know, connected. I knew he was involved and engaged in politics. I knew he was a supporter. Uh, you know, I'm not I didn't know how much of a supporter, but we're learning more now that he's a very, you know, close person, you know, person to Tasha Diaz. He's actually the nephew, the biological nephew, because I know they talk a lot of um, family stuff between them. Lorraine Lopez, Tasha Diaz. But uh, Lorraine Lopez is his biological aunt. And listen, I'm not here to be disrespectful to anyone. So I just want to put that out there first. This is not to put anyone uh, you know, uh, to attack anyone or to, um, you know, insult anyone, uh, you know, 
uh, maybe the city, uh, the majority leader. I'm just kidding. But you know, this is really important, right? And this is something that we need to know. And so Lorraine Lopez is a big supporter of Tasha Diaz, often referring to her as her niece, but not a biological niece. But the gentleman to the left there is the biological nephew of Lorraine Lopez. And so I want to show some of this meeting uh, and so you can hear what they were trying to solicit to the committee. And then I'm going to show some pictures, uh, uh, you know, showing the their relationship, right? They obviously are close. Good start. Um, good afternoon, uh, Council President, uh, Deputy Clerk, uh, City Clerk, Council Members, Committee Chair. My name is Brian Quijano. I am an executive for Diamond Defense. Over the last six years, our research and development team has uh, tirelessly Excess, exhausted all options on with, for one goal, one goal only. And so, what I noticed right off the bat was that the guy on the right was not prepared. He was stuttering, uh, and he actually the guy on the left have to had to interject at times. And and I thought to myself, why don't he just you know say the spew? Why doesn't he give the presentation? And obviously, uh, he can say it better. He knows the information. But now, as, as we look back, I'm realizing he wanted to remain, you know, uh, uh, more quiet because he obviously had the connection to Tasha Diaz, right? He was, you know, they knew there was a whole setup. You know, Tasha knew he was going to be there. She knew who he was. They had planned this, I'm sure, over, you know, some drinks or something, some night, you know what I mean? Thought this was a great idea. Long, I would imagine, and in my strong opinion, with her campaign people, Frankie Jarris and Zahi Jarris, because there's also connections to this individual and that man as well. And the people that come up, and I'll talk about that in a second. In those past six years period, the development of our defense systems was the preservation of life. You all wake up in the morning, situate your families, go to work, and then you come, make time for your constituents as representatives of the city of Yonkers. I hope he says it. (laughs) Everyone, you walk into this building with the intent to make Yonkers a safer and better city. Every time we turn on the news, though, we see Unfortunately, a lot of mass shootings going on in this country, even here at home. Fear mongering. And it gives. I'm going to move it up. This is the wide, but also video speed presentation. Shots. This is the video presentation that they brought with them. You know, they, they're showing you uh, how how the uh, windows can withstand different calibers, right? They shot at the windows. I've seen this before with actual real companies that do these things. So they're just basically mimicking, you know, what they've probably seen, uh, you know, actual real companies. Because again, this is a, 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 you know, these guys are not bulletproof window experts, right? Um, they may have some experience in some security company or something, but the company that they are now, uh, you know, representing or or own and that are they're sitting there before the council on is their company that they started, you know, not that long ago. You know, I, I don't even know if it was a year ago, right? So it's a new company, and yet they're sitting before our city council now bidding or trying to uh, soliciting for a contract for bulletproof windows, right? Even if there was a need, even if our kids were in some kind of danger and we needed to install bulletproof windows, would you want it to be Tasha Diaz's, you know, you know, a, a, a relative, right? Who started a company, you know, not less than a year ago, who, you know, has transitioned many times to many different things. And now here he is a bulletproof window expert guy. Is that who you want them to hire to do this? So would you want them to seek out the company that has the most experience, the years in the business, right? The reviews, the clients, they couldn't tell you what who were their clients because it was confidential, top secret, because there were no other past clients. I guess, but well, check out this demonstration. They have a guy hitting the window now. Once again, this is our system applied to existing quarter inch piece of glass, minimum quarter inch piece of glass. And we can sit here and watch this this entire time because it's going to be a 60 second video where we could, you know. 
for it. It's the only national is they there's been uh, shot with multiple projectiles and multiple calibers, and after it's been uh, beaten with an aluminum bat, trying to gain force entry, uh, the glass maintained its structural integrity, and it still maintains ballistic integrity. Uh, this right here is a this really, it's in a pub, public setting, but we'd be more than happy to answer those questions. People in the world that can stop a bullet on existing quarter-inch glass. And we're right here from Yonkers. Work. Let me hey, this does. Sorry. We are currently in queue to be tested for the AT ASTM designation 53561, which is the forced entry resistance simulated active shooter attack. Uh, from what I understand, uh, currently, specifically based on our patent, we are the only people in the world that can stop a bullet on existing quarter inch glass. And we're right here from Yonkers. <laughs> if a bad guy can't get in, I'm going to introduce uh, County Legislative uh, James Nolan. So now they have people come here in support of this, right? They have people come up, right, to say this, you know, this is great. We need this. One of them was County Legislator James Nolan. But it's no surprise. He's connected also to Tasha Diaz. They have the same campaign manager. Let's take a look. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, good to see everybody. I am here today because I was personally uh, a witness to this product uh, last week. It was a little bit late, uh, but Rob made sure that I was going to get there no matter what. Uh, but I watched this glass take round after round after round of handgun, shotgun, AR-15. And I was even there when that bat bent completely. Uh, but it... As somebody that used to work in Yonkers Public Schools, I know how important it is, and also just outside of schools in general, in municipalities to be protected um, and keep everybody safe, to make sure that the police get there in time to go after these individuals that are conducting this. Uh, fortunately, and knock on wood, thankfully, we have not had a situation like this in Yonkers Public Schools or any uh, municipality in Westchester County. So do we need it? Is there a need? Right. You can tell us that it's great and it can't go. You know, the bullets won't go through. I was there. I was a witness. Yeah, that's what bulletproof windows are there for, you know, to stop bullets. OK, that's great. But is there a need? Do we need to spend X amount of millions of taxpayer dollars on this when there are so many other problems within the school buildings that are probably endangering our kids every single day when they go in there now? That needs to be addressed. Right. Health issues mold, asbestos that may be exposed, that may have been disturbed, because they say it's safe as long as it's not disturbed. But do you know if it's been disturbed or not? Well, they'll tell you if it has, right? And we've seen that problem in schools before, School 23, I believe, up uh, Van Cortland, right? So what is the need? Is this just a way for them to funnel money into their pockets they see that there's grant money and there's, you know, funding, taxpayer money that they can get. And so let's try to grab it. And sure, we'll put the bulletproof glass or whatever, but we're going to make a cut. We're going to make 10, 20 percent on that money. And we're going to do this all over again with another company and another company, because this happened on the same day that an article came out in the Yonkers Ledger that she was trying to award Frankie Jarris her campaign manager and part-time city employee, another no-bid contract. So how many times have she done this and we just missed it? All right. James Nolan, again, is su supported and managed by the Zahi or the Jarris consulting machine. But I think the thing is to... Thank you, uh, Gerald from Westchester County Department of Corrections. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Gerald, and welcome to our home. Why is he there? Thank you for having me. Why is he there? What do you have to do with this? You're from Westchester County Correction. Are you saying that you guys are not able to keep your inmates locked in and they might escape and we need bulletproof windows in our schools? Why are you there, guy? And then there was school uh, security, safety, the head of school safety, of course. Of course, they pulled all the stops. Amount of time. So Tim Hodges, Tim Hodges, former police chief, Yonkers police chief. What's his connection? 
Well, he's a Zahi candidate. In fact, many people say that's why Tim Hodges lost in 2021 against Anthony Moranti for the 6th District, because many people there did not like Zahi Jerris. So there's the Zahi Jerris, Jerris political machine connection. Corruption. The guy is corrupt. He has been arrested, charged, and convicted of corruption, specifically by bribing a city council majority leader. Is he up to his old tricks? Well, I've been saying he has been since the housing vote when she flip-flopped. Tasha Diaz is definitely corrupt and she needs to be investigated. Why Liam McLaughlin isn't investigating her? Because he's a part of the team. You have to have the inspector general on your team. You don't want them actually investigating you, do you? So you put your boy up in there. Your boy. That's right. That's who he is to those that are in power here in the city of Yonkers. He's their boy. I love Lorraine. She helped me out a lot years back. No doubt. I'm not denying it. We still can't award family and friends no big contracts, especially if they are not needed. So that's what the issue is. Not we dislike Lorraine, but they're, you know, things that are not okay. I don't care for the job council person Diaz is doing now. Yeah, you and a lot of people, Thomas. But I appreciate you, Thomas, and I respect your, uh, you know, your comments. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, public service should not be a route to lucrative businesses for family and friends. Serve the public like you were elected to serve and stop lining your pockets. Absolutely. But this isn't Tasha's, you know, brainchild. You know, this isn't the doing of Tasha Diaz, although she's the one that will take the majority of the rap for it. She's the one that's going to serve most of the time for it. Right, Tasha? Remember, Sandy and Nabi got six years. Zahi only got four. A lot of people were upset with that. I'm sure she was hoping for probation, right? She thought she was going to get probation, but it didn't work out that way. But she only got six years at least. She was supposed to get more. They were recommending a lot more. But you know how it goes in Westchester. There is no need uh, for bulletproof windows. That is totally ridiculous. And even more ridiculous is to contract with Tasha Diaz's relative. What else is she trying to push? And what has she already pushed? Someone needs to stop this misuse of taxpayer money. We pay for that, taxpayers. That's why. Our schools are in need of a lot. So if we're going to spend our taxpayer money, we should prioritize, right? Do we need bulletproof windows? It's just wasteful spending. That's just one of the ways um, there's wasteful spending going on. Nolan needs to go. Uh, you know, Nolan shouldn't be manipulated. James, you shouldn't be manipulated in that way. I mean, if you're going to be sincere and genuine about it, I know you, I believe that he cares about the safety of the kids, but he doesn't fully understand what he's really doing, right? I don't think he understands that what's going on there, right? I think he believes he's doing a good thing, right? He's not fully assessed and analyzed the situation there, right? And he's being played. And then you're going to be a part of you know, wrongdoings and may not even have known about it, you know, but you were complicit anyway. You know, ignorance is not, you know, a, a defense, as they say. Uh, he's connected to city and they share the same campaign manager, 1000%. I sincerely doubt that they are the only business providing this product. It's absolutely not. There are a lot of other companies out there. A lot of, he's saying he's got a patent for it. Okay, what do you mean? All right? You got to pass. And some of the, and you know, the schools are very old. They have these unique windows, you know, they're not like the cookie cutter windows you see nowadays. So I would imagine that many of the windows would actually have to be removed. Let me just be clear on this product. This product is a piece of glass that they are going to put over the existing glass there on the buildings. But, you know, if you've been to the schools there, those windows are, are weird, oddly shaped, unique. Not all of them are the same. So will they be able to put a layer of that bulletproof glass over every window or will they have to be completely replaced to be bulletproof, right? How much does it cost to just try and layer these windows, right, as opposed to just putting a glass in altogether, just redoing the windows, right? And God forbid that there was to be some shootings into the windows. You know, kids can duck, right? Duck on the floor, get low right away. Right. And so it's going to make it that much more difficult. Not many school buildings have windows on the ground floors where you can see the kids and you can, you know, um, easily target them. Right. A lot of the windows are high up. You would have to climb. But again, you know, it could be a sniper situation 
but that's you know it's super rare we want to be safe of course never sorry but i mean you know come on it, 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 we have to spend money wisely right we're broke right we're, we're definitely broke the correct need to spread the tax money uh the correct need to spread tax money to pockets of people who support your ambitions uh, this will cost millions of dollars as there are 43 school buildings. That's what I mean. This is a huge contract. They're trying to make money over here, They're trying to cake it. Just a thought, every mass shooting over the last 25 years that I'm aware of has occurred inside the building. Exactly. So I have a question to uh, the, the real value of having bulletproof windows instead of bulletproof classroom doors and interior walls. True. As well as, uh, you know, the entrances, making sure that the doors uh, for entrances and exits are, you know, maybe bulletproof there, you know, or very difficult to get in that will slow people down who are trying to get in so that police can arrive and, you know, take care of the situation. Right. And unlike the police office in Texas, I have no doubt that our Yonkers police officers will go up in there and do what they need to do to save our kids. So, you know, just want to shout you guys out. There you go, Freddie. So they will need a favor vendor to put in new windows. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, so they will then need a favored vendor to put in new windows. They should. <laughs> that's true. Right. If they have to replace the windows and that. But it, it wouldn't make sense to replace the window just to add this layer of bulletproof glass. Rather, you just get a bulletproof glass. They should spend that money protecting the children from the predators and groomers. I, I, that's what I mean. There's so many things that our children in the public schools are more in danger of, like pedophilia. When you're allowing a pedophile in the building and not just the, the guy that I'm you know talking about. There have been teachers that have been arrested very, even very recently for sexual misconduct and sexual abuse against students and physical abuse as well. Uh, stabbings in the schools, right? Fights, there's gang problems in the school that you know they're not discussing, right? And so they don't like me talking about this. They want you to be ignorant and unaware. And so while they talk about putting bulletproof glass on the windows, they're not protecting your children from the dangers inside the buildings that are currently existing. And so if I talk about this, my beautiful wife who works in the public schools becomes a target. But I think that would be a mistake. Yes, I heard they do it. They had a drag show at the, yeah, they had a, yeah, they did. I was going to talk about that a little bit. A, a drag queen story hour, a drag queen makeover. I'm not anti-trans. I'm not anti homophobic. I'm not, I'm not homophobic. You know, you can live your life. Do what you want to do. Just do it in your private, you know, see. Even me as a heterosexual man and I'm married to women, right? I'm the traditional, you know, uh, um, couple or, or, you know, partnership, as you would say. I don't think it's appropriate for us to discuss our, you know, sexual preferences and things like that of that nature, right? It's just not appropriate, especially to kids. You want to do it to adults in a club whatever that's your that's your deal but why is it targeted towards kids in the public library at a time where more kids are going to be there more you know families it, 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 i just don't i don't get it i don't get why the push to make the the kids you know accept it be a part of it engage in it right i, I don't get it i just don't get it and that that becomes a problem to me you know and that's that's why i have an issue with it be worried about the catholic priest getting your kids they're that that they as well, you know, they as well. We definitely have to be aware of that. Obviously, that's caused a lot of problems for the Catholic Church, right? They've had to settle a lot of uh, sexual, um, you know, abuse cases, and they paid a lot of money, which is one of the reasons why we've seen a lot of Catholic schools close down. I'm not saying the only reason, but uh, definitely, you know, uh, adult entertainment should be left for adults. I also don't believe kids should be allowed in Hooters restaurant. You know, I used to go there when I was in high school, um, they did have great wings. The wings were amazing. I promise you that. We went for the wings. Maybe the first time we went to see what, it, you know, the, the women. But uh, after that, we got hooked on the wings. And that's why we went. I promise you. <laughs> so here's, look, look, it can it be more obvious. Liam McLaughlin, come on. The inspector general doesn't do his job because he he's not going to investigate the Tasha Diaz or the Shanae's or, you know, anyone else that's a part of, you know, the machine that, is active here, right? That the Jerris machine that's a you know uh, uh, been running campaigns like Shanae, like Tasha, uh, the majority. Uh, I'm sorry, the city council president James Nolan, right, and others. Deanna Robinson, candidate for District One. So look, this here you go, right? I mean, I I, I would I believe that Lorraine Lopez would actually get in a real physical fight 
to defend Tasha Diaz, right? And I don't think that Tasha Diaz would need anyone defending her. I'm sure she's capable of, uh, you know, physically, you know, holding her her own, right? So here they go. T these two right here have my heart. Family first. Lorraine Lopez with Tasha Diaz, the majority leader, and Mr. Uh, Robert Foodie. Robert Lopez Foodie, actually, right? So, I mean, uh, Liam, what do you mean? She's trying to do it again, Liam. She's trying to do it again. You have to investigate. It can't just be Mike Cater that you investigate because he was going to run, you know, for mayor one day. You can't just do that. That's not how it works, said the Jonkers Inspector General. Maybe we should bring Brendan McGrath back, you know? I mean, at least he did real investigations, you know? Maybe that's why they stuffed him over at MHA where he has to deal with the nonsense. Brandon, can you do something about that guy, Brian, please? He's in your property. I've done the research. It's actually part of, you know, listen, I, I'm going to just stay away from there because I, I don't want a target from that person right now. <laughs> City Hall has no money for YPD school resource officers in the schools, but there's money to make sure that bulletproof, bullet fired inside of classrooms ricochet off the windows and comes back into the classroom, make perfect sense. That's what I'm saying. There's so much that we need in our schools. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, even if there was a need and we want to keep our kids safe, we're not going to hire, you know, uh, Tasha Diaz's relatives, right? We're just not. You know, it's just not a good idea. You know, for example, look at the the, the construction going on at the new school, right? The contractor uh, somehow has a family connection to the mayor. So the mayor who's on this uh, Yonkers Schools uh, Joint Construction Board, right, has to excuse himself during certain meetings with this contractor. So, you know, that that I think that causes issues. And now the contractor is delaying the job, right? Because he wants, they want another $7.6 million. So, you know, it's like, you know, are the relatives of these elected officials trying to just shake down the taxpayers? Is that what's going on here? The friends and their family just looking to shake down. So, you know, you can understand why they come at me, right? I mean, they don't want me messing with their money, but you messed with my money. So you shouldn't start it, boo-hoo. Right. So now we now we're getting back at you and we're going to I think, you know, Tasha, obviously, uh, you know, everyone can see should be investigated. She absolutely should be investigated. And I have no doubt that she should be arrested. And I believe that she is truly in the back of her mind has a real concern that one day she may be arrested. So I think that's where they should go, you know, arrest Tasha, flip on and she's going to, you know, sing and maybe even. Uh, John Rubo, too, if they, you know, look into that perfect solution company that he's got over there, you know, I don't know what that's about. And so, look, here's another ad. Again, he was the former owner of the Whiskey House. Right. This is back in the day. And this is uh, Tasha before, uh, you know, she would turned into Spinderella. Right. Yeah. This is before, you know, or the beginning of her Zahi Jerris, Jerris machine uh, relationship. Uh, you know, she thinned down. The hair got, uh, well, it's been a little messy lately, Tasha. The hair has been very sweaty looking. And you know why that is. I know why that is. And take care of that. All right, take care of that. Yonkers Whiskey House. Tasha Diaz, she's do doing a fundraiser at the Yonkers Whiskey House. Okay. I mean, again, this is this is all about family and friends. The network, once again, trying to stifle taxpayer money. We're already in need of money. The state doesn't give us our money. We're broke. The schools, we don't have enough. We can't pay for every kid to get into a UPK program. There are many on a waiting list. We don't know what to do. There are spaces, but we don't have the money. So many kids then go without. Which kids get chosen? Right? Kids get pushed just to make the uh, graduation rate look great. But they can't apply it once they graduate. That's the part that's important. And so there they are, remaining in their communities, many times not achieving any more success than the high school degree that they pushed them out of the school with. But they don't care because now they're going to push you out of the city altogether by bringing in these luxury developments. But many people are concerned here in the city of Yonkers that most of the affordable housing is being congregated all to the southwest side. And that's all they seem to be doing is building affordable housing there and only there. Yonkers has the largest percentage of affordable housing uh, apartments, people who are in need of affordable housing in the county. 
And many people are questioning, why are they not building elsewhere outside of Yonkers? Why not build affordable housing in Hastings? Build affordable housing in Bronxville. Build more affordable housing in Scarsdale, near Zahe Jarris' home. Why aren't our county legislators pushing for this? This is a conversation that I have with Dan Brenda, who's running for District 4 on the Board of Legislators against Vidag Gashi. He says that we need to spread affordable housing out more, and he's in agreement with those residents who are concerned. What do you guys think? Tasha Diaz, uh, Tasha Drips is always on Freak, sir. I don't like her politics, but she looked damn good while doing it. <laughs> I don't know. Check out the wet, messy hair lately, but we're not going to say why. Uh, now nah, we keep those people where they belong. Now nah, we keep, we got to keep, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's, you know, what it seems like they're doing, right? Keeping all the affordable housing. And, 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 and just to be clear, a lot of the affordable housing that has been built has been senior affordable housing. It hasn't been, you know, uh, just affordable housing for any in general, but it's been mostly seniors. Um, a lot of the other affordable housing, they've been renovations. They renovated the cottage apartments. They renovated Mofer. They renovated the chicken coops, right? Many times coming back with less apartments. So they're pushing people out slowly, gradually, right? Pricing people out, right? The average person in the city of Yonkers makes $35,000 a year according to Mayor Mike Spano, but the housing that they're bringing in, you have to make at least $150,000 a year to be able to afford one of those apartments by the waterfront. So if you can't pay, you can't see. That's how it's going to be, right? So, uh, you know, that's a problem that a lot of residents, you know, um, are seeing, are foreseeing, are seeing already and are speaking about, um, you know, and so I hope to speak with more residents, more groups out here in the city uh, of Yonkers um, soon. In the next coming month, I definitely like to meet more people. I'm also looking uh, to, with other people, of course, working to put together a panel as well as a town hall discussion here in the city of Yonkers, where we can do it both in person and online. Uh, for those you know who can't make it, and for those who don't have uh, internet access, you can come uh, in person. So we're working on a place. We're working on the panelists. So we're hoping that we get a lot of partici uh, participation in that because it's very important that you are aware of what's going on here in the city of Yonkers because you are being affected. Most of you are being affected unless you are a part of, you know, the elite, the political elite, or unless you are a city employee making, you know, over a hundred and some thousand dollars who lives outside of Yonkers, you know, you are being affected. The majority of you, especially on the west side, southwest and northwest, where they're building all of those movie studios that have not been hiring. Where are the jobs? Where are the construction jobs, at least? Why are you bringing them in from Connecticut and Pennsylvania and New Jersey? Vermont. They're coming from Vermont to work on the construction sites here. Those were the jobs that were promised to you, Yonkers, but you don't get them, right? Maranti said himself he pushed against the developments of five-story buildings being built in his district, buildings that would have been developed for affordable housing crisis. You know, and I would say to that, and not to defend Maranti, but I would imagine that the majority of his constituents did not want it, right? And so, as the representative of that district and those constituents, he was doing his job, right? So now it's up to other individuals, right, who have influence as well, you know, to push for that to happen, right? He's only one guy, right? I mean, they get things what they want done all the time, right? So they could have got that done also if they really wanted to, even if Maranti was against it, right? So, I mean, that's just what I'm saying. So, you know, and, and again, that's, what you're going to see on the east side. You're going to see John Rubo uh, against it. You're going to see Maranti against it. You're going to see Mike Breen against bringing affordable housing over on the east side. But it's not just about bringing affordable housing over to the east side, right? It, you know, because you, we also have to respect people who live there and who pay to live there and want a certain quality of life, don't want to see many big buildings that are going to also cause more congestion in the area right so you know that's that's also thing it has to be evenly distributed throughout the county that's the problem right everybody you know the majority of the people who live in affordable or need affordable housing or even low income housing should not be you know congregated or you know you know or condensed into the southwest side of yonkers right so and that but that's what's been happening right? and our county legislators are not doing a whole lot about it they're not pushing for that to be any different 
right? They're, they're, they're working right along to keep that going. So that's what I'm saying. So, you know, I'm not looking to push it onto the east side. I'm saying let's spread it out, right? Let's, let's, let's you know, there's other areas outside of, of Westchester County, but those those towns don't want that. You know, Scarsdale, Bronxville, Mount Kisco, you know, all those towns, They, they people are going to come out. And that's that's a lesson that we need to learn. That's why they get what they want, because they come out. It's like the school boards in a lot of those towns, right? And I'm not trying to say, you know, the parents that do come out to school board meetings, but in a lot of those towns, I mean, they come out, okay? You're not going to push none of this in our kids. You're not going to do that to our kids. Oh, you don't have proper heating? Well, you better find the money. We don't want to hear that Albany is not giving you that. What? That's your job. Why we elect you? So you can go get the money from Albany. If you can't do it, then we're going to vote somebody else in. That's it. Well, we have to be in their faces, not like in an aggressive, like, you know, violent way, but, you know, being there, being at the meetings, paying attention, watching them online if we can't make them live, understanding what's going on. What are they voting on and how does that impact us? Right. Because many times we don't know. I was that person as well. I approved, approved, approved. OK, whatever. Oh, look, now they're building all these buildings over here. Now rents are going up. Oh, man, they're not giving no one jobs. They're bringing in a bunch of people from all over. Right. And they're pushing the, the people that have been here forever out. Right. They're taking away your groceries and your local businesses and stuff. But they're not fixing the schools. Right. They're trying to do these things. Now you see the little snapshots on the Internet. Don't let that fool you. Right. They can easily make any kind of narrative they want with a few snapshots posted on a social media page. Right. We have to really see what's going on in our schools. And people are seeing it. People are sharing videos. They're sharing the information. Right. They're concerned. And a lot of us should be concerned. We should become more concerned because it's only going to get worse. And if we don't start stepping up, then you better start looking for somewhere else to live. You know, I'm serious. You know, so that's that's the reality of things. So what else is going on here in Yonkers besides the majority leader trying to give away contracts? The Ramada Inn, I'm being told, is being is it's is a migrant shelter. And so my concern is how many more migrants will come into Yonkers after the elections? Right. They're going to play a sweet. Right. No, we're not going to you know, get a lot. No, this is it. We're, we're suing the Ramada. No, look at us. We're, we're fighting this. But that's because the elections are here. After the elections, they don't have to worry about being voted out. They're going to welcome more in because it brings money. It brings federal and state funding. And what does that do to you? Well, it crowds the city even more. It strains more resources, crowds the schools. We have kids coming in who have to enroll in our school districts, an already overcrowded district. But making it, you know, even more difficult than overcrowding is the fact that teachers will have to deal with multilingual teaching. You have kids who won't speak the language. And I'm not against the migrants. I'm not against the people. I feel bad. I absolutely do. But it's a shame what those in power have done to these folks. They've manipulated them and used them. Bringing them over here only to leave them in motels and on the street and having to prostitute in order to make a living. And everyone loses. They lose. They don't want to be in a hotel having to prostitute, go out in the street and beg for money or find something that they can sell on the corner. They don't want that life. That's not what they expected. And we don't want to have to see it in our communities. We don't want to have to see people just loitering on random streets because they have nowhere to go and nothing to do. They can't get a job yet. And even if they could, they don't speak the language. They don't have the skills. Many are young. Women with young babies. What experience do they have other than traveling a tough, long journey to get to a country that isn't going to do much for them? It's already struggling to do for its own people. And it's only going to cause animosity between the locals and those that are coming in. And it's a cater, a, a, what do you call it? A powder keg. It's ready to explode. And we've seen it happen in places like Staten Island. And so if we see more migrants coming into the city of Yonkers, will we have similar scenes as in Staten Island? 
you know, it's it's a problem. It's again not about the people. It's um, I, I God bless them. God bless the children. God bless them if they're here. I mean, I, we can try to work with it, but it's a difficult situation. It's a difficult situation. We've worked hard. We've done what we thought we had to do, right? We've learned the trade. We've gone to college, right? We 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 we've paid the taxes, whatever to do to get to this point and now it's being disrupted and we have to deal with it and if we don't we're bad people no it's not how it works you know let's be fair uh yonkers resident caesar martinez and grace rose Be- bayez an nypd officer were apprehended by federal agents for being involved in the distribution of fentanyl and heroin while on active duty Grace Rose Baez was taken into custody alongside with Cesar Martinez from Yonkers, and both were charged with conspiracy to distribute narcotics and the distribution of narcotics. So we can't even trust some of our NYPD police officers, right? You see a pretty face. She's a police officer. She's trusting. What harm could she present? She's killing people with her boyfriend via fentanyl and heroin. Unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. And more. You see, Maranti says, you're busted, Tasha. We got you. Mr. Robert Foody, I meant to show this earlier, even ran for Senate against Andrew Stewart Cousin as a Republican in 2014, and he didn't do too bad. But when you have the Zahi Jerris machine behind you, you're going to do well, if not win. There he goes, sharing my Spano stuff. And he's a Trump guy. He's a Trump guy. Busted. Tasha, look, look, look. That's the feds, Tasha. That's what Anthony Maranti is saying there. He goes, do you see that? that those are feds coming for you. Those are the feds coming for you. Early voting, folks, starts October 28th. It's very important. Let's come out and vote. Let's make a difference. Let's make this the largest voter turnout in a decade. Let's do this together. The largest voter turnout in decades. We can do it this year. November 7th is election day. Early voting begins Saturday, October 28th, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it will continue right up into the elections. November 7th. Let's make this the largest voter turnout in Yonkers in decades. Get involved. Latinos. We need you to get involved. Know what's going on. Don't be fooled by people who bring you free food. That's the kiss of death. They're going to push you out, make your life difficult. We got people right now struggling with no heat. Their rents are going up. One poor lady, I got to go visit her, was moved from her apartment. She was taken to the hospital. She had to get something done when she got back. The landlord decided to move her up to the top floor in a one-bedroom apartment where there's no heat now. And he can get away with that. So let's go talk to the elderly woman. Uh, Hopefully I can do that this week. But folks, don't forget early voting. Will Library, Nodine Hill Community Center, and the Yonkers Riverfront Library between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Monday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday, noon until 8 Wednesday, what do they what do they do this with the weird times? Eight, then noon, then eight, then noon. Just, just make it eight to six every day. Well, you can definitely vote after 10 every day starting October 28th till 6 p.m. Actually, the 31st and the 2nd till 8 p.m. This is crazy. I got it up here if you want it. Share it. Make sure you come out and vote. Let's make this the largest voter turnout in decades because those that want to remain in power bank on you not coming out to vote. They like low voter turnout. There goes Jose Alvarado, the mayor, Simmer Brandon. She's going to be in it to win it until she's not anymore, until she buys the farm. Shanae Williams campaigning uh, a few days ago with uh, city, you know, gear on, official city gear. Not supposed to do that. SI, you know, SIU, whatever, 1199. And here I'm just showing some uh, stuff here. If you're interested in this Chamber of Commerce, the Yonkers, I'm going to be showing transparency, right? So I'm going to put out information. You can take a look at it if you're interested. 
uh, you know, this is just what they make. They take in who are the uh, board members and the officers, if they make any money, uh, if they don't make money. Right. So just just informing the folks. This is St. Joseph Hospital here. This is a text message I got. You know, I put it up there. I put things up that I get. You can take a read it. Alberto Velasquez, uh, your CSCA members are looking for you, dude. CSCA members are looking for you. Uh, here, uh, I want to show this really quick. Uh, to those who were upset with the South Broadway, look, look at this. Look at this. this is a, look, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Right? Look at her hair here. You think it's pretty? This is very sweaty. This is Deanna, right? Look, explain this. Explain this. Explain this. Explain this. Right? If you're running for city council, uh, District 1. This is part of the Frank Jarris. And this is this, this is this is the type. I mean, you know, then we wonder why our city is the way it is. We cannot just vote and allow anyone to become an elected official. At some point, maybe we have to have some kind of requirements. I don't know. But we have to do better. We need we need we need better. I mean, this is and then some of you endorsing the unions endorsing drinking and driving should be ashamed of yourselves. I mean, I told you, but they, they don't, you know. They don't. Backtracking to Yonkers being Hollywood and the Hudson, I have to ask how the lengthy actors writer strike will affect Lionsgate, who is bit by bit owning the city of Yonkers. Definitely, definitely they're owning the West Side over there with Joe Cotter, man. Joe Cotter and Lynn Ward. I heard she's bringing in some uh, money from Korea. That's what's buying up all that property. How do you link up with Joe Cotter up in Connecticut? You guys from Connecticut? Lynn Ward is the money woman, actually. She's the one, uh, the money. Uh, Joe Cotter, he's maybe connected to the official. She wants to be low. So here also I'm doing my research and I, and I find this, right? This is a, um, you know, a, a schedule J, right? This is a form 990 from tax uh, filings. This is for the Yonkers Larkin garage Inc. Right. I never, I didn't hear, I didn't know about this. Right. So uh, apparently there are three individuals here, actually there, there are more than three, but the main ones are John Luziski. This guy's all over. He's making 180000 just for being on this, a part of this organization, right? Wilson Kimbo, 120000 This is in addition to other monies they make. This is just for this garage that they are the directors, officers, and trustees of, right, for whatever reason, and they make money. The mayor, 156000 plus non-taxable benefits, 30000 total of 186. he's pulling in. That's an addition. I mean, who would want to like you know? What I mean, it's money, 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 money. Shanae Williams also sits on that as a board member. I, I think I cut that her off, but she's making another fifty three thousand, aside from her city council pay. How much more money are they making through other organizations that we don't know about? Properties and businesses that somehow they set up as five hundred one c threes. No wonder they want to stay in power. Jessica Gordon, South Broadway bid. She makes $87,000 to do that, to yell at street vendors and people sitting in parks. James Flynn. James Flynn is on a lot of these boards. He's part of the Flynn, Michael Flynn, the general. Yeah, this is their family. They grew up here in Yonkers, just in case you didn't know. That's a fun fact. General Flynn is from Yonkers. Jose Alvarado is a board member. Andrea Stewart Cousins a board member. Corazon Pineda, Isaac Nader Sage. They don't care about the community. They ain't say nothing to her. Tasha Diaz. The mayor's on the board. Andy Diaz. I think he's a... Is he with something with Tasha? Maybe I could... No, not all Diaz's are related. Get it right, Fred. So, you know, i just going through these things and just wondering what's all this about. You know, as she goes, you're going to vote for Shanae to be the county... Uh, she ain't doing nothing. She doesn't know anything about anything. And I'm not even being disrespectful. I'm just being quite honest. It's got to be honest. And so, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on here in the city of Yonkers. And if, again, if you're interested in finding out some of this stuff, I, I look it up here for those who are doing the research, right? To all my fellow, uh, you know, researchers and auditors. We are the auditors now. Shout out to uh, United Yonkers. We must be. Definitely come together, do the research, hold them accountable, assure transparency. 
And this is the Yonkers Downtown Waterfront Development Corporation. I'm just curious, what did they do? Anyone know? They got contributions and grants of 444000 the previous year, this year. And this is uh, 2016, so this is old. But I'm just trying to understand what was going on here. Where does this money go? Total revenue, over a half a million dollars. Then they have 344000 of expenses, which is their total expenses. So less uh, revenue, that leaves them with 237. This is for 2015, 348 for 2016. Total assets, $651,000 worth of assets. So what do did, what did they do though? To encourage the development and retention of jobs. What jobs? You're forcing businesses to close. And the, the companies that are coming in are not hiring local people business and industry to foster projects for commercial, retail, and rent residential use and jobs to develop the city of Yonkers downtown waterfront area. And how are you doing that? How is this organization doing that? What are they using this half a million dollars that they get in contributions? And who is uh, contributing? Who are the contributions coming? Or where are the contributions coming from? Who are the contributors, right? So what's going on here? These folks are enriching themselves. They are enriching themselves. They don't care about you. And if you don't come out and vote, they're going to continue to enrich themselves while they push you out, while you struggle. While you find it hard to continue to live in the city of Yonkers. While you are finding hard to get from one part of Yonkers to the other without taking you an hour. Congestion, the traffic, the roads, the infrastructure, the schools, what is truly being addressed besides the developments? And even those are really struggling as they are a revolving door. And I can understand why. Go up to uh, or go online, check out the reviews of the Avalon, the Apex. I mean, horrible reviews from bed bugs to flooding to fire alarms going off, to the loud sounds of construction, to people using the amenities that don't live there, to the buildings being unsafe, packages being stolen, the cost going up every time you sign your new lease by 20%, the shoddy work. So what is really happening? What are they really bringing to the city of Yonkers? Or is this all just one big money grab where in 10 years from now, they're going to leave all of this up, hope that it succeeds, and they're going to be gone somewhere, maybe in Florida or Rhode Island. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter, folks. I appreciate the support. Thank you very much. This is Basement Politics, a place where truth lives and corruption dies, right? Please pray for us. Hopefully my wife will be back to work soon. There was no need for her to be suspended, but I am the target of retaliation and so is she. We need your support on Freddie Vasquez. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, Yonkers. God bless. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter, the place where Truth lives and corruption dies. Let's expose our corrupt elected officials. Let's hold them accountable. Let's demand and expect transparency. Otherwise, we will come out in full force and vote. Let's make this the largest voter turnout in decades. Yonkers, we must vote. I'm Freddy Vasquez. This is based on politics. Muchas gracias. Buenas noches. God bless. Have a blessed week. Let's see how things go. It's going to be a tough one, but I'm a fighter.